Today we're going to hear from four great speakers about Road Safety Week and about their activities during Road Safety Week. I'm now going to hand you over to Richard Koto from Brake, who will talk a little bit about Road Safety Week and this year's theme. Hi Laura, thank you, thank you very much for that. Um, Firstly, just to say a big thank you to all of you for, um, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Richard Coto, and uh, I am the Senior Corporate Fundraiser for Break. Uh, my details are up on the screen now. I'm just having a quick look through our attendees. I know we've had around 40 to 50 people sign up uh, for today's webinar, um, and that includes representat representatives sorry, uh, from the police, fire service, uh, various councils, um, as well as driving instructors, charity and business representatives, so a wide spectrum uh, of people getting involved in this year's event. Obviously it's fantastic, as I say, to see such a diverse range of people, um, and hopefully today's webinar will give you all some really positive inspiration and ideas on how you can take part too. Uh, just before I continue, uh, I'd like to say a huge thank you to our Road Safety Week sponsors, um, RSA and Specsavers, uh, and also the Department for Transport. Uh, obviously without the support of these three uh, headline sponsors, um, Road Safety Week wouldn't be possible, so um, a big thank you to them. Before I dive into Road Safety Week, though, just to give you a bit of a, a background as to break more generally, um, so that those of you who perhaps don't know us so well um, have a bit more of an understanding of who we are and, and why we do what we do. Um, we're a national road safety charity founded back in 1995, um, and in fact next year we'll be coming up to our 20-year anniversary. Um, we're mainly based in the UK. Uh, but a few years ago, we started to expand our operations throughout, uh, throughout the world and globally, uh, and have started to operate in New Zealand as well. Uh, Break has two main aims. Firstly, to prevent road crashes through education and campaigning, uh, but also to support the victims of road crashes too via our helpline and support division. We run educational projects for children, teenagers, and at-work drivers, uh, to name just a few of our uh, educational events, but we also campaign on a number of road safety topics as well. Through our campaigns, we aim to edu engage and basically to engage the general public with our road safety messages, uh, as well as helping us to achieve changes to the law to make our roads safer, uh, and crucially, ensuring the victims of road crashes receive proper support as well. So Road Safety Week, it's one of our longest and biggest events uh, of the year. Um, we've been running Road Safety Week annually for the past 18 years, uh, and fantastically it continues to grow year on year. Um, it's not just about road safety professionals who can get involved. Uh, road Safety Week is for companies, schools, emergency services, youth groups, uh, any individuals really who want to take part and make a difference to their local communities. And in fact, some of the most exciting road safety initiatives we've seen have been joint efforts between lots of different parties. As I say, Road Safety Week has grown year on year since it began. Uh, just around eight, well, just shy of 8,000 schools, organizations, and communities took part in last year's Road Safety Week. And obviously this year, we want it to be bigger than ever, which is where you guys come in. So we set the theme, and then we provide you with ideas for what you can do, and some tools to help you, and it's up to you from there on in. So that brings us on quite nicely to this year's theme for Road Safety Week, which is, uh, or should be up on your screen now, of look out for each other. We all use the roads, uh, whether that's trucks, cars, motorcyclists, cyclists, pedestrians, horse riders. Uh, there's probably a few more that I've not mentioned in there. Um, and our roads are shared space. So it's up to everyone to be considerate and unselfish, and also to be aware that some road users are more vulnerable than others, uh, which obviously feeds quite nicely into the fact that we all need to be looking out for them. Unfortunately, this isn't always the case, and just one inconsiderate or careless act can result in a tragedy. Selfish behavior on the road can also mean that people, cyclists and pedestrians in particular, feel less able to get out and about on foot and bike um, as they don't feel safe. In an era where we're walking, running, and cycling and being encouraged to be healthier uh, and also to take part in more sustainable ways of traveling, um, it's really important that we ensure the safety of those people who choose to walk and cycle feel safe when doing so. So through our media work, um, we'll also be calling on drivers to protect people on foot and bike by slowing down to 20 in communities, looking twice, and taking it slow at junctions and bends, giving people plenty of room and time uh, when they're out on the roads. We'll also be calling on, pe on everyone to put safety first 
uh, and be more considerate to each other, uh, encouraging people on foot and bike to never take chances and make sure they can be seen. These are key messages for you to promote as well, and they apply to all road users, not just drivers. So a few key messages there, um, but beyond that, it's, it's really up to you how you'd like your organization to get involved. Um, the first thing you need to do, or I'd urge you to do, is visit our Road Safety website um, and register for a free Road Safety Week Action Pack. If you've not already done that, um, the link's up on the screen now. Um, get yourselves over there, get registered, because there are a number of resources in there which will help you to brand your event and also give you some guidance, uh, further guidance on this year's theme. Um, so in the resource pack, you receive a template press release, which you can send out to the media as well, um, helping you to gain some media activity, uh, media coverage rather for your uh, for your event, um, and crucially, some guidance on community campaigning. So case studies of organisations who've done some really positive work uh, in previous road safety weeks to engage with their local communities. There's also guidance on how to teach road safety in primary, secondary schools. So if you are looking to target uh, schools, colleges, universities, there are lots more information within the pack on how you can target them and, and the types of language and tools you can use to educate those age groups. Um, and then finally, I've mentioned it slightly uh, earlier, is we, we've also got some case studies. Um, so again, a few examples of what organizations have done in previous years, which will hopefully act as inspiration for you. Uh, another option for you is to buy one of our giant Road Safety Week banners uh, to promote Road Safety Week and your involvement, um, whether that's internally, so displaying it on um, displaying it within your company grounds or whether you want to do something within a local community, um, so potentially sponsoring one of these banners uh, and displaying them at a local school. They are a fantastic resource for, uh, as I say, branding your events, but also showing that, that you are uh, working within your local communities and do care about uh, the communities that you work in. Um, if you are interested in potentially uh, placing an order for one of our banners. My uh, my colleague Mike's details should be up on the screen now, so um, feel free to get in touch. Another example of activities you can do is um, using Road Safety to raise awareness uh, of activities in your community. So, for example, why not run an Exchanging Places style event where you can get some uh, the local cyclist groups and potentially pedestrians to uh, sit in the cab of a, an HGV or an LGV vehicle um, and crucially also getting the LGV HGV driver to come out of the cab of their vehicle and to see the viewpoint from the, the vulnerable road user. These are really, really good events um, for helping to take away the, the slightly negative attitude of, of blaming each other for uh, the potential problems that, that each uh, road user creates. Um, what you could also do is uh, take part in our Too Young to Die uh, campaign. Um, so there's lots of opportunities around Too Young to Die, which is one of our headline campaigns. And this is all about targeting, targeting young people um, within high schools uh, and also colleges. Now, as I'm sure you all know, uh, young people are the most at risk out on the road. So um, taking part in our Too Young to Die campaign is really helping to um, tackle what is ab absolutely a, a huge issue for, um, for us as a charity, but also for the young people themselves. Um, one of the things you can look to do is book an internal to you to die training session uh, where a member of break will come out and help uh, members of your team to deliver um, a presentation to a high school and teach them about the dangers that they face uh, in an interactive workshop. Uh, another option is to potentially take part in one of our bright days. Um, you can see a poster up on the board there, a bit of, bit of an, an explanation as to what that pro project is. Um, but it's essentially a really simple fundraiser for break, uh, which helps us to continue our vital work. Um, you don't have to do a bright day, though. It could be anything from running a bake sale in your office, um, or you could uh, look to do anything you like, really. Um, again, just helping to raise funds for the charity. Uh, Road Safety Week is a big fundraising event for, the, for break, and um, yeah, we do receive a huge amount of support from it, so it's, it's greatly appreciated. I'm going to tell you why you should get involved uh, in case you still need persuading. Uh, hopefully you don't, but just in case you do. Um, it's really easy to take part in, um, and you can do it on any scale you like, um, on any budget that you've got, uh, on any type of organization that you, you're running. So um, the resources that we produce, all of the information we provide is applicable to anyone, really. So hopefully um, you can take advantage of that and use it to run your own internal uh, road safety campaign. It's a fantastic way to engage with your local communities, uh, but crucially also your colleagues as well. Um, 
with road safety, if you make a bit of a splash with our road safety week activities and engage with the local media, it can be a great platform to build on with the road safety uh, campaigns and activities that you're running internally. Um, as I've touched on, it's, it's a really great way to gain some positive media coverage um, and also to show your community that you care about their safety uh, and from a CSR perspective showing that um, you're putting something back into the communities that you're working in. And most importantly, um, it's crucial that you take in part because there are still five deaths and more than 60 serious injuries on UK roads every day and we all need to continue to work together to make roads safer and reduce those numbers down to zero. That's about everything from me. Um, thank you very much for, for listening. Um, are there any questions? Thank you very much for that, Richard. Um, as I mentioned at the start, um, as I can see a few people have um, come in a bit more recently, so I'll just reiterate. Um, if you have a question, you can either type it into the question box and um, we can read out your question to Richard. Um, or you can press the raise hand button, which should be at the top right hand of your screen. Um, and that will show us that you have a question to ask and we'll come to you and unmute you so you can actually um, speak directly to, uh, to Richard and, and ask your questions. Um, so does anyone have any questions? If nobody has any right now, of course, if you do think of anything afterwards um, that you'd like to ask us about Road Safety Week, please feel free um, to get in touch directly with us. Um, we will be sending out a, a recording of this webinar um, after it's finished, so you'll be able to, to refer back to, to everything that we said anyway. Um, and of course, you can drop an email to, um, to Richard or to myself with any questions about Road Safety Week. Um, looks like that's all we've got, so I'll say thank you to Richard. No worries. And um, I'll go ahead and introduce our next speaker, who is Martin Dow from Cheshire Fire and Rescue Service. Um, no okay, Martin, over to you in that case. Uh, right, just, well, just before I go on to my uh, little section, uh, I just want to re reply to Richard. I mean, I sent a couple of uh, text messages in uh, just to say that, you know, we from Cheshire Fire Rescue Service have supported BREAK. Uh, it's very easy to do for anybody out, out, there, out there that wants to do so. Uh, we've supported BREAK, and this is, as you've said, this is your 18th year, and Cheshire Fire and Rescue Service have been supporting you for this will be our ninth year. So all nice and uh, neat, that is. So we have a report every year that we deliver on what we've delivered on your behalf, which we send to BREAK. And anybody out there that wants to know what we've done as an organization can uh, request a, either a full report from any of those years uh, from either myself at Cheshire Fire Rescue Service or one of my staff, or you can actually go to BREAK and pick up the report that uh, BREAK have each year from us. So uh, from, a, from a, a partner partner point of view, uh, BREAK focuses uh, all of my uh, fire stations in Cheshire, uh, therefore I've got 42 different watches and therefore we try to deliver 42 separate events which are fire service and fire station led so it gives a little bit of variation to what people want to do in their own areas so that's from from my point of view regarding Richard's uh, little presentation Laura. That's fantastic many thanks for that Martin and we're just as an aside we really appreciate your uh, your long-term support of Freight Safety Week and very much looking forward to um, hearing your, your presentation this morning so you can share a little bit, bit of that with others. Right, well, what we're going to talk, talk about this morning, I know you mentioned, or Richard mentioned, we're going to be talking about Breaks Road Safety Week, and on there, everyone, the first person you actually speak to uh, is going to speak about something slightly different, although we do deliver it through Road Safety Week as well. Uh, I'm going to talk about our uh, delivery of road safety education to primary and secondary school children across Cheshire East, one of our unitary areas. Uh, Cheshire Fire and Rescue Service uh, are a public public publicly accountable body and they are responsible for ensuring that the local communities are protected by an effective fire and rescue service and that includes road safety activity. So we know the problems are out there and we know we attend more RTCs, road traffic collisions, than we uh, attend fires from house fires and we rescue far more people from those uh, vehicle incidents than we do from house uh, incidents. So we know there's an, a, a risk out there and from a fire service point of view we deliver what's known as an integrated risk management plan which takes into account what the risks are in our particular county and that's the same for every 50, all 51 fire rescue services from across the UK, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. 
So there's nothing, you know, nothing different between Cheshire or any anybody else. Uh, and in 2000, 2012, Cheshire East Council commissioned Cheshire Fire Rescue Service to deliver a road safety education to all its primary and secondary schools so within the Cheshire East area. And this was specifically targeting Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 4 students. We developed presentations along with Road Safety GB and also with the Cheshire Education uh, Authority because we wanted to make sure what we were delivering it was what they would agree to and what was acceptable to those organisations. We certainly wanted to work with Cheshire Education but we also wanted to work with the largest group or largest, largest organisation that deliver road safety across the country, that was Road Safety Great Britain. So we wanted to make sure we were going in it uh, with our partner's knowledge, we wanted to make sure we went in uh, with our eyes open, and we certainly wanted to make sure we were successful in what we wanted to deliver, we wanted to make sure that what we were delivering was what the students wanted. So we trialled uh, this pro project, project on a number of primary schools and high schools prior to us actually starting the you know the, the proper rollout and we took on board uh, feedback from many students young and older through key stage two and key stage four and from many teachers and I think now we're in our would you've started our third year of delivery of uh, this project and I think we're on to version three of the key stage two and version five of the key stage four so you can see things have always been tweaking, always been moving forward, trying to develop, trying to make things a little bit better, making things exactly what uh, the students and teachers wanted. So uh, I'm just trying to look at my presentation slide. So let me just go to this, find out which one. So we'll move to the second slide, Laura, if that's OK with you. And just gives you an indication of what a the questionnaire from a treatment and control groups before and after session. So you can have a, a rough idea of what we're sort of trying to talk at, talk to people and young people about. The key stage two presentations, each presentation lasts for approximately an hour. So it's class based, ideally suited to deliver the individual class sizes of approximately 30 children. It's fun, it's interactive, and that is really one of the areas where we, we as an organization, need to be. I think any organization that delivers road safety needs to have that interactive message. That's where people, that's where pupils, that's where people learn from an interactive session. And that highlights the dangers to 10, 11-year-old young children in Key Stage 2 who are most likely to encounter, for example, in the dangers. And that's crossing the road, cycling without a helmet, not wearing a seatbelt, the importance of not distracting the driver, and being distracted whilst walking along the road or crossing the road. So there's a few little areas there, sort of five areas that we picked out. Uh, and we have an exercise in map drawing, which encourages the young children to think about their environment, the roads they have to cross, and the safer crossing places and the safer places to play. This is part of the presentation which helps with the trans transgression of travelling to a local primary school and to the potential longer journey to high school. So that's in a nutshell what we deliver at Key Stage 2. And Key Stage 4, where the presentation lasts again approximately an hour, can be delivered into year groups or individual classes. We really aim to deliver to a high school in individual year uh, classes. Although it may means us having to visit the school approximately four to five times, it's much more beneficial when you're speaking to a class of around 30, 35, as opposed to a year group of 200, where you don't get that buy-in, you will not get that buy-in. Uh, so getting down to smaller group sizes is absolutely fundamen fundamental to our success. Uh, again, this is aimed at older, t older teenagers in this session, and it aims to stimulate and discuss dis their discussion about the biggest threats that young people face on the roads. And we include topics such as peer pressure, reckless driving, the effect of alcohol and drugs, speeding, and the failure to wear a seatbelt. Both of these packages were developed in collaboration, I say, with Road Safety, with Cheshire East Council, Cheshire East Education, and Road Safety Great Britain. From that early interception, we decided we were definitely going to have to evaluate what we were going to do, and we utilised uh, ROSPA's uh, evaluate toolkit. 
So we sent a member of uh, staff from Cheshire Fire Service to work with ROSPA of how we were going to build uh, and measure the impact of our road safety presentations at both Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 4 students. And what, what was decided was two schools from, each pri from both primary and high schools were chosen from urban, rural, and market town areas. We've got quite a diverse area in Cheshire, uh, which some people will no doubt understand. So that totals six high schools and six primary schools, which ineffectively approximately managed about 200 to 250 children from each age group. And Rossborough uh, decided that was probably the, you know, the maximum total we needed to get to look and how they were going to divide it. Half were going to be the treatment group and half would be the control group. Each group were given the same identical before survey questions. And that's the sort of documents you've got in front of you at the moment. A week after the treatment group had completed their survey, they would receive a road safety presentation with no further road safety intervention until after the survey questions three weeks later. So that was like a month. The control group did not receive any control presentation, road safety presentation at all or any intervention after completing the before questionnaire until after the questionnaire four weeks later and they answered these questions at the same time as the treatment group. This group then received their road safety presentation after completing the final questionnaire. I know it sounds quite, it probably sounds complicated, it complicates the life out of me, but the difference in the self-reported behavior of the treatment and control groups were then compared, which give you a measure of the impact of what our presentation and what our delivery was actually delivering. And this actually come out uh, really, really well after the first year, first, uh, first attempt. And after one year, we did a complete, re complete report looking at what sort of figures we achieved. So I'll just ask Laura to move on to the uh, third slide. And this will uh, give you an, an idea of where we're up to. I'm bearing in mind this is uh, year two, but I've got some information, some figures to actually see the difference what we've done. The graph on the right hand side key stage two so that graph shows the percentage of the treatment and control pupils at key stage two who answered questions as we would want them to there was a 23.5 percent improvement in positive answers in the treatment group following our visit compared to a 14.8 percent reduction in the control group during the same period so you can see that yes the the Young people do know something about road safety, which is all good because mums, dads, teachers and their own knowledge would say that they would know something. But that increased after we'd, we'd delivered our presentation, it's a month after. So they would, they're remembering stuff we've sent. And like the control group, you can see that is a limited, that's a limited one. Although we do go back again and give them, the, give them the presentation, we don't walk away from them and not give them anything. So you can see where Cheshire Fire Service staff have gone into primary schools, there has been a 23, nearly a 25%, nearly quarter better knowledge for young people at Key Stage 2. And I think that's a really good starting point. That's grown from last year, I must admit. But it obviously proves that what we're doing is we're moving in the right direction. Now, looking at the second graph, Key Stage 4, you would expect the knowledge of older children to be higher from the, from the staff and that is shown by you can see that straight away that it is a higher uh, percentage at 65 and 59 but even again after the graph illustrates uh, there was a 5.8 percent improvement in positive answers so nearly six percent in the treatment group following following our visit compared to a very very sim very small increase which would you would probably expect if you spoke to somebody or give them a questionnaire and then give them the same questionnaire a month later you would expect a very similar response whereas the treatment group had the input had the presentation and it has gone up so i'm not saying it's infallible i'm not saying it's brilliant what i'm saying is it's working to a certain level and feedback we've had from the students and pupils has been very, very good. So uh, whilst we've, um, we've used this uh, 
education and evaluation summary to measure the success of the program, and we've measured it in three ways. We've looked at the outputs, the close monitoring of the number of visits to ensure we engage as many primary schools and secondary schools as possible. And this year, or last year, I should say, this report reflects a 100% success rate, and we delivered to 131 primary schools and 21 high schools across Cheshire East. So then we look at the outcomes, and we use the Royal Society for Prevention of Acc Accidents, ROSPA, their Evaluate Toolkit, and the process to track pupils, their attitudes to the main hazards or road safety hazards before and after our visits. The third element is the additional feedback, recording comments and suggestions from teachers and pupils alike. And although this combination of information gives us a good indication of the effectiveness of the program, Conclusions about the impact and the number of people killed and injured on Cheshire's East Roads should not be drawn. This would need a longer term, more in-depth exercise, which could be considered at the end of the four-year contract, which would give a clearer link between the program and emerging trends. This might be possible to establish in future. It would require a more comprehensive evaluation by Cheshire East Council, integrating all of their combined road safety activities with a broader and long-term road traffic collision trend analysis. Uh, but from a fire service point of view, uh, and being the first fire service to be commissioned to deliver this sort of project, it's been a, quite an exciting time for us, but it's been very uh, in-depth. And we have delivered, uh, as I say, to uh, the 130 primary schools which gives us just short of about 5,000 pupils. And again, at Key Stage, uh, key stage 4, it gives us a, a success rate of when we delivered to all 21 high schools, uh, and the number of pupils is around 6,000. So the delivery of the project in its second year was 100% successful, with over nearly close on 11,000 pupils having successfully completed the Road Safety edu Education Program. So from them sort of numbers, it's been very good, but it has been interactive. It's quite in depth. Our staff do feel, you know, it's, it's hard. It can be hard work, but it's really, really valuable. Now, if I just, uh, if you ask Laura again to click over to the next slide, and uh, we can look at some of the comments. And I'm not going to read them out for you. You can see them on the screen. That uh, comments from Key Stage Two teachers are. Uh, absolutely vital for how we promote it, how we deliver it, and to make sure that we've got the, a really good buy-in, not from just teachers, but from students alike. So, and also, obviously, at Cheshire, at Cheshire's, uh, Cheshire County Council, or Cheshire East County Council. And you can actually, you know, if you look at those sort of comments, uh, you can see that these from, you know, teachers, and it was, you know, a really comment on one. It's a great presentation. Good use of facts. What can happen to people if care is not taken to wear seat belts? Very good presentation. Hard hitting facts with humor. Children really enjoyed the session. That's the important part. We've got to make sure that the children enjoy what we're teaching them. And uh, I think that's why we've been successful over the last two years. And we're now moving into our third. Again, if you look at the, uh, if you move on to the next. Uh, slide Laura for me and uh, that will show you the, some of the comments from Key Stage 4 teachers and uh, one of the comments says, you know, the, pre the presentation slides were wonderful. I feel I learned a lot, never mind the pupils. It was hard hitting in places, emotive, but I think that is exactly what our pupils need. Uh, one about street cred, I love the hints and tips given to students in order to keep themselves safe, yet not to lose their street cred. Empathy showed a real understanding of how we would have behave in certain situations. And I think that is really hitting the nail on the head, where we're talking to older kids, and we've got to make sure that it's not to lose their street cred. And that was a really good comment, and I thought that was really good. So we've looked over the last two years. We're now into our third year. So in the second year of this four-year contract, we've delivered to close on 11,000 students this year and last year. We've measured the attitudes, the behaviors of these young, of the road hazards, and sampled over 300 pupils from each year. There was a 13% improvement in Key Stage 2, and this is showing an upward trend of, from last year from 11%. There was a, nearly a 7% improvement to Key Stage 4, which again showed an upward trend improvement from last year's figures of just about 6. 
So it certainly provides an encouraging benchmark against which to monitor progress over the next couple of years. Our work to ensure the presentations are age appropriate and engaging has been rewarding for my staff with positive feedback from teachers and pupils alike who observe the delivery. So that's where we are at the moment. Uh, we've had the project evaluated and we will we continue to do that. We consider each co comment that we get where and where we can pr promote it, where practicable. And we share this report uh, as best practice to Rosper and also Cheshire East and anybody else that wants it. And I know uh, I spoke to uh, a young lady yesterday from uh, Northumbria Police who uh, I think John Heckles is on the line today and I've sent her this second year report for her uh, for her information. So Laura, thank you for, and I hope I've not bored you to tears with this, and sometimes it can be a little bit confusing, but uh, that really is what I would like to say about our prod product. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Martin. Um, no problem. Just quickly, if um, anyone does have um, any questions for Martin, just a reminder that you can either press the raise hand button and we'll then unmute you and you can ask your question directly to Martin. Um, or if you would like to type a question into the question box, um, I can then read it out to Martin on your behalf. Um, just to say thank you very much for that, Martin. Um, well, you certainly didn't bore, uh, bore me on that, so um, <laughs> I'm sure you didn't bore anyone else either. That was very, very interesting. Sometimes um, it can be a bit dry when you're talking issues. about reports. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I I think this is a really fantastic project, and although as as you said at the start, you know this is a, a webinar about Rotator Week, and this wasn't actually a Rotator Week initiative. Um, I think the lessons from this are very much applicable to any kind of um, educational initiative, um, which of course is what what a lot of people will um, try and do during Rotator Week. Um, I think what really strikes me with this is that although obviously this is a very very large scale project. Um, that you've worked on. I think the same lessons would apply even to quite a small scale uh, kind of one-off thing. You know, the the whole um, idea around actually sort of planning it out, making sure you're targeting your messages right and evaluating it as well, I think I it's think, hugely, hugely important. So thank you for sharing yeah. that. I, th I think you, you've hit the nail on the head. Yes, it is important. And it's not always, uh, excuse me for saying it, it's not always the sexy side of doing something. We like to deliver something, but it's not always mm. the sexy side that writing reports and doing the evaluation. I know my staff are climbing the walls sometimes with me, sometimes where, the, where they're up to with evaluation and how they're going back to schools time and time again to get that information. But it's absolutely critical to the ongoing success of anything you try to do in the future. You've got to, be, you've got to put yourself out to be successful. And that's the reason why I've sort of chosen this sort of project mm. to sort of share with people today. Uh, yes, it's not, oh, it's not the, it's not the front, front, front facing element of anything you do. That's the good bit. And I know my staff love delivery side and they can go out and talk to people. But when they're back in the office and going number crunching and picking up paperwork and reading, re writing reports, that is what develops and brings people onto the onto the on side with whatever you do and supports what you do and gives that educational evidence at the end of a project. So mm. yeah, absolutely, I completely agree. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions come in at the moment, so I'll just give it another minute just in case uh, anyone's thinking up something and uh, trying to type it in at the moment. Um, so do, do remember, everyone, you can either type a question into the box or you can press the raise hand button. Um, but while we're waiting just to see if anything else comes in, um, I had a quick question as well, actually. Um, you mentioned that you, the, the sort of the questionnaires and um, the, the education that you delivered was targeted on specific risks that kids of different age groups face. So you talked about, you know, yeah. wearing seat belts and crossing the roads and such. Um, yeah. How did you identify those? Was that based on local data or was that just a... a it was mainly based on uh, rotated GB data. Okay. And we looked, at, obviously we didn't, we didn't have that much individual data mm. on quite a small unitary area. I mean, Cheshire's only a million people full stop with all four mm. unitary areas. Cheshire East is approximately 300 plus thousand people. So it's not the biggest area in the world, although say 21 high schools and 130, uh, 131 primary schools. But we didn't have that sort of in-depth data that we could say, right, we could stab in the dark, we could, give them, we could deliver this, but we wanted a little bit more knowledge 
of mm. what we were going to deliver and why we were going to deliver that in the first place. So that's when we went to break, uh, not break, sorry, <laughs> we went to <laughs> RSTV to actually find out some in-depth data. What is the, what is the, you know, down and dirty stuff that we need to teach? Why are young people at Key Stage 2 getting injured on the road? Why are Key Stage 4 children getting injured or students getting injured on the road or around the road network situation? So we picked the main sort of five products from each one and that's how, mm. that's how we came to it and that's when we went back then to Cheshire East Education Authority to say this is what we found from our evidence from what we gained from Road Safety GB. This is what we would like to promote in your schools and it went from there. It was a sort of two, three, sometimes four way discussion between RSGB, Cheshire East County Council, Cheshire East Education Authority and Cheshire Fire Rescue Service because ultimately we were going to deliver it. It had to be something that we could deliver, we could be interactive with because as I've said before, it has to be virtually in a, you know, on a face-to-face -face interactive one-to-one -one basis because that's the way and I understand you're in a class but you've got to get that interactivity going both ways and the quicker you get that up and running the more benefit the students will get out of it. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Okay, fantastic. So in a, in a nutshell, Laura, yep. it takes me 10 minutes to talk about anything, even, even <laughs> a minimal question like that, how did you come across the five, five areas? But that's what, I've, no that's what I do, I talk. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all, glad to have you uh, here talking to us. Um, I can see that Kate Underhill has um, raised her hand. So, Kate, I'm just going to take you off mute now, so if you'd like to ask, uh, ask your question. Uh, okay, Kate. Okay, Kate. Hi, yeah, um, we run something similar to um, uh, the Key Stage 4 um, in Dorset, where, where we uh, concentrate on um, interaction. Could you give us some examples of what sort of things you do um, to make that session interactive? Yeah, on the Key Stage 2, we ask, the, we ask the children to, we have a map on the board or we had individual maps on paper to each child and those children then give their uh, a, a map of how they get to school, whether it be on foot, on bike, on car or whatever and they, they go through, you know, past zebra crossings, traffic lights, safe places to walk, safe places to cross, safe places to bike, cycleways and that sort of, so that's one of the interactive ways we talk about road safety and the other one is using a, the, a miniature crash helmet, a uh, cycling helmet with a boiled egg and the children absolutely love it, they love that and if we can actually go out into the playground to do that it's really good when we actually show them that you know using a boiled egg without the safety helmet and using an egg, you know a boiled egg that has you know got a safety helmet, the, the results are dramatically different and that visual impact is what stays with them and uh, I can't emphasize that mu you know as mu much as I could you know it's really really important so that's what we sort of interact with them at key stage two level key stage four level is a little bit different we did but they do some like uh, role playing and they ask you know oh, the person next to you could you just you know ask them a question and we get interactivity between the pupils or students within the within the class so the kids are talking to their next their partner next door to them or the partner behind them and then we'll take a couple of people's answers and discuss it between the group it's a different way of uh, learning it's something that we you know we've utilized from the educational people that we spoke to and also road safety GB's educational people because they they come and watched it come and watch the program and said if you actually did this you'd get this response and so we've taken quite a bit of uh, advice uh, because obviously we're not teachers and I had a number of community safety staff you know 30 staff and I made sure they all went through uh, educational uh, learning methods and we actually utilize break uh, themselves to come and deliver presentations uh, too young to die is one of the pro one of the products so we've had break up here a couple of times to go through educational ways of delivering uh, with my staff so that's a learning process as well although we've used you know other other organizations as well for from a teaching point of view so that's how we've delivered it, the ed inter interactivity element of it hope that's answered your question Thanks for that, Martin. Um, yes, I hope that's answered your question. It. Yes, thanks. Thanks so much for that. Yes, I hope that's answered your question. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay, no problem. 
Hi, sorry about this, folks. Um, it looks like our next presenter, John Heckles, is having some problems with his audio, so he's not able to um, come on the line right now. Um, so instead, I'm going to introduce um, our other next speaker, um, Joanne Whirl, um, who's from South Yorkshire Safer Roads Partnership. Um, so, Joanne, are you there? I am, Laura. Can everybody hear me? Hi there. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Sorry again. Sorry about the uh, the technical problems there. Um, hopefully, we'll okay, no that problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, if so John needs to jump in at any point, then just just let me know. If he needs to jump in at any point, then um, that's fine. I can, uh, um, okay. I can stop at any point. So. Okay, thank okay. you. All right, okay. so thank you very much, Laura. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, my role as the Safer Road Education Manager. Um, and it's my job to um, coordinate all the road safety education training and publicity activity that happens across South Yorkshire and across all of the um, Safer Roads uh, partners. So we work with the constituent partners road safety teams, but we also have a small um, Safer Roads Partnership Central team um, who are managed by, uh, by the Safer Roads Education Manager. So today I'm going to talk about um, what we do as, as a partnership um, to promote the BREAK National Road Safety Weeks, um, cover how we've planned our events and what lessons we've learned and um, how we've applied this learning to hopefully make improvements for future years. So the Safe Roads Partnership, we're um, a multi-agency, multi-functional organisation uh, made up of the four local authorities in South Yorkshire. Um, we've got the South Yorkshire Police there, including South Yorkshire Safety Cameras, Fire and Rescue, the Passenger Transport Executive, um, the Highways Agency, local public health bodies, um, Peak District National Park and the University of Sheffield. So all the agencies making up the partnership have um, aims related to reducing the number of people injured in road traffic collisions and making South Yorkshire roads safer. And using the casualty data, we take a systematic approach to treating uh, worst first. So the worst areas, but also the worst road user groups as well. And our analysis has um, become more sophisticated over the years. So we're not just looking at where collisions occur, but which road users are involved. And we're digging deeper to try and address some of the root causes of collisions. And our road safety, education, training, and publicity work is delivered um, at and through the LifeWise Centre where we're based. Um, and we've previously won the Prince Michael International Road Safety Week um, a road safety uh, award for the work that we do. So we've made quite a lot of progress over the years in terms of um, reducing the number of killed and seriously injured casualties on the roads of South Yorkshire. But since 2010, we've started to see a levelling off of the number of um, um, killed and seriously injured casualties. So via our partners, we're using a, a variety of approaches in a bid to reduce casualties, so from enforcement of road traffic laws and uh, managing speed, uh, which is done obviously by um, the police, to um, uh, de uh, delivering engineering measures to ensure that the highway network can accommodate all road users as safely as possible. And this is all supported by a full program of road safety education and, tra and training and publicity activity so we provide um, a series of educational interventions in schools and colleges where we target priority road users, including pedestrians, young drivers and riders. We offer uh, training for road users to help them develop their skills and adapt to safer behaviors and attitudes to road use. And we run publicity campaigns throughout the year to convey key road safety messages. And in delivering all this activity, we encourage people to think about the consequences of poor road safety behaviour and encourage positive attitudes and behaviour in relation to road safety. So as part of our annual calendar of um, road safety campaigns and events, we've supported Road Safety Week now for a number of years and really this is the culmination of um, a year long of campaigning activity by the Safer Roads Partnership. And in 2012, we hosted the regional launch of the Road Safety Week campaign at the LifeWise Centre. Um, this is our interactive safety centre, which depicts a small town. And we use it to deliver true to life safety interventions to people of all ages. 
So in November um, 2013, last year, we once again took our campaign on the road and we visited um, a number of supermarkets and shopping centres across South Yorkshire. Um, planning for this starts um, early on, back in August, when we start to look at booking venues, preparing materials, um, organising staff who are going to um, uh, work at the event, and arranging briefings for them to ensure that we have um, consistent messages being conveyed. Um, we found that it's especially important to book early to get into some of the supermarkets because um, these requests to visit often have to be referred up to head office for approval and don't happen overnight. So um, that, if that's one piece of advice I can give, um, make sure you book early to avoid disappointment. And we chose... Uh, Joanne, uh, sorry, can I just yeah. interrupt you for one second? Um, we course. can't actually see your slides at the moment. Um, did you have All a right. box pop up um, asking you to share your screen? Uh, bear with me. Yes, bear with me. If you could just click OK hey on that. Um, from, yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, we can see them now. Excellent. OK. OK, thanks. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. Sorry about that. Um, so we chose venues in each of the four districts across um, South Yorkshire. We targeted weekends as well as um, weekdays. And on some days, we split the team and had events at more than one venue. Um, worth noting here that um, we managed to get into the Meadow Hall Shopping Centre, which is um, a large shopping centre in South Yorkshire. And we thought um, this was um, kind of um, a fantastic opportunity for us. It's a prime location. Um, it has very many visitors um, every day. But actually, it didn't work as well as we anticipated it might. Once we arrived, um, we weren't able to have our stand in the shopping mall. Um, and we weren't allowed to approach people. We had to wait for people to come and see us. But obviously, people didn't come up and talk to us because we didn't have anything to promote the Safer Roads Partnership. So it was a big lesson for us in terms of um, it sounded great in the first instance, but um, not necessarily um, in practice. OK, so they're the venues that we um, visited. So in terms of um, who was involved to help us deliver um, National Road Safety Week last year, we were able to draw on um, the staff resources from organisations across the partnership. Um, so together with staff from the central team, and I've got five members um, of staff in the central team, we worked with um, the South Yorkshire Fire and Rescue Community Support Officers, um, and they helped to make up the, the, the core team um, of support. We also had support from the local authority road safety teams when events were taking place in their respective areas. And we were also um, able to draw on the services of a small number of very willing and able volunteers who um, work with us at the Safer Roads Partnership. To promote um, activity in schools, our Junior Road Safety Officer Coordinator assisted by contacting um, schools who had um, a Junior Road Safety Officer Ambassador. And as we were working with different partners, um, we supported them in helping to deliver some of their safety messages when we were out at the road shows. Um, so when we were engaging with members of the public, the fire service were asking them about if they got a smoke alarm in the home, um, if we were working with the police um, and their safe neighbourhoods teams, they were maybe giving out um, crime reduction messages. So with the 2013 National Road Safety Week um, message around um, don't get distracted, our target audience was um, pedestrians um, of all ages and drivers. And we targeted the drivers by the supermarkets and the out-of-town shopping centres um, and to try and catch as, as many um, drivers and especially commuters as we could, we adjusted the times of the road shows from our traditional 10 till 4 um, to stay on into the early evening so we could catch more of the, the, the commuters on their way home from work. And we targeted um, pedestrians via um, transport interchanges and via the schools. We developed our own leaflets and posters um, with messages for both um, drivers and pedestrians. Um, and before we went out, we held um, sessions for staff and volunteers and provided briefing notes prior to the event to ensure that everyone understood what the messages were that we were communicating and how we would monitor engagement with members of the public. So we made sure to say that the events were spread across South Yorkshire and that we visited um, venues in each of the local authority areas. Um, we distributed our um, Don't Get Distracted flyers via the road shows. Um, and the Police Saver Neighbourhood team helped us by distributing flyers um, in their specific areas. 
through our contacts with the local transport operators, some of the uh, major bus and, and tram companies agreed to display our posters on their vehicles. Um, and they did that for us um, free of charge. Through the um, involvement of the passenger transport executives with the Safer Roads Partnership, um, they displayed posters for us at the transport interchanges. Um, we ran the design competition that was being promoted by Brake across our primary schools, and we asked children to design a, a bumper sticker with a road safety message. And through our contacts with the local authority network managers, we were able to secure use of the variable message signs across South Yorkshire, so we were able to display relevant road safety messages throughout the week. The Safe Roads Partnership has previously funded um, a road traffic um, collision intervention vehicle to use really as um, an engagement tool uh, when we're talking to members of the public. And we made use of this vehicle as part of National Road Safety Week. And we took it to events. We used it as an attraction to get people in, um, to get them interested in talking to us. And it has the benefit of having um, a DVD and a display screen in the boot. So we were able to use this to play appropriate road safety films and clips um, to illustrate the issues that we were talking about. And generally, we found that this is a, a very useful tool to draw people in. So we had a very uh, busy and tiring week, um, but after uh, we got back to the office and we sat back really to assess how successful the campaign had been. Um, and throughout the week, we engaged with almost um, 1,600 people. Um, we know because at each of the road shows, we use clickers to record, record the number um, of engagements that we have. Um, we had a fantastic reaction from the public. They supported the key messages of the campaign. Um, they were um, readily approaching us. They were asking us questions about a range of road safety issues. Um, and as a result of um, the discussions that we were having with people, um, we had increased referrals to uh, various safer roads partnership interventions, such as um, training for different road user groups and ages. Um, we had an increase in the number of visitors who were um, looking at the Safer Roads Partnership web pages. Uh, where all our, our materials and resources that we give out as part of the roadshows um, have the web address um, on them for further information. Um, and we also had an increase in the number of Twitter and Facebook followers um, following um, the, the week of roadshows. We received um, positive media coverage, both um, in the local press and via the radio. Um, and importantly, we also supplemented and enhanced our links with the retailers and the operators and the passenger transport executive, all of whom supported us um, in delivering the campaign. So in terms of um, lessons learned um, and um, what, what, do we, uh, what did we find out for the future, um, really in terms of making sure that staff have a comprehensive briefing before the event, that's uh, really essential so that everybody gets to know the materials that we're using. Um, and everybody has um, the same information about the key messages that are going out. As I've already said, timing of the event um, is key, really, to engage with the target audience. Um, looking at events into the early evening, uh, we found it was very useful for us in catching um, the commuter on the way home from work. Um, and people have more time to engage um, at the shopping centres. So we went to one of the um, out-of-town shopping centres, the, the Yorkshire Outlet at Doncaster. Um, people are using that more as a, a leisure opportunity. They're, they're, they're on a day out. Um, rather than trying to catch them um, as they're going in and out of the supermarket when uh, they're in more of the rush, they've got less time to engage with us. So really think about um, the venue that you're picking to target your audience. We also look to build a relationship with the retailers for the, for the future. So we made use of our existing contacts, but also um, extended the reach of, of the message that we were giving out by um, giving a pack of information to the retailers to display in their staff areas. Um, and it's also something that you're able to give to the organization that, that's just for them, really. Use of the, um, the Subaru vehicle and the display materials really were key in trying to attract people to the stand. Um, we need to, to get them to come and talk to us in the first place. Um, having very um, visual display materials um, and gets people hooked in, gets them interested, coming to talk to us. 
and then once they, they approach us, then starting to get them more involved with the practical demonstrations. So just as speakers have said um, previously this morning in terms of um, uh, lessons having to be interactive, trying to make it interactive with all the engagements that we're having um, with the, the people that we're talking to at the road shows. And also looking at what we can do to um, collect more qualitative um, evaluation data. Um, we've counted numbers, which is great, but we need to um, capture more um, about people's knowledge and attitudes towards road safety, both before and after um, we've spoken to them. So for um, National Road Safety Week um, this year, um, we've um, already um, in 2014 had a major cycling campaign in South Yorkshire to coincide with the um, Tour de France Grand Depart in Yorkshire. Um, and that was aimed at encouraging drivers and cyclists to share the road. So we'll be building on this um, as part of um, National Road Safety Week. And we'll also be linking into our um, Be Bright Be Seen campaign, um, which launches at the end of October. So given this year's campaign message and the focus on pedestrians and cyclists as well as drivers, we're aiming to target um, town centre venues rather than the out of town um, uh, places that you need a car to get to. Um, so we'll catch all types of um, road user groups. We're exploring um, things like the use of display screens in schools to target um, children and parents. Um, we already have a series of young driver sessions um, scheduled at one of the local colleges um, throughout uh, Road Safety Week. So we'll be reinforcing the campaign messages as part of this. And similarly, where we have um, interventions planned for other vulnerable road users, we'll include these messages um, as part of those interventions. We'll also um, be using our existing contacts with the major local businesses um, to hold events for staff and pass on messages this way. And um, we'll utilize things like the brake reaction tester to demonstrate safe stopping distances and be setting this up in the Subaru to encourage people to have a go and offer that more interactive engagement. And um, finally, we'll be looking to undertake more qualitative research using quick and simple clipboard surveys um, of a sample of people um, who are visiting us. So that's about um, it from me. Really, I think what I'd like to say is to wish everybody luck in, in developing and delivering their um, National Road Safety Week event. If we can provide any further information or anybody's got any queries, um, please do um, get in touch. My contact details are there um, and we'd be happy to talk to you. Um, but if you want to find out more about um, the South Yorkshire Safer Roads Partnership, um, visit the website or follow us on Twitter or Facebook. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Joanne. Um, I just wanted to say um, we are running a little bit low on time, and I know that our next speaker is also running a little bit low on time. Um, yeah. So yeah. if it's all right with you, Joanne, um, if we come back to you at the end of, um, of John's presentation for, for questions yeah. and comments. Yeah, no problem. No problem. OK, fantastic. Um, so if, um, if anyone does have any questions or comments for Joanne, please feel free to, um, to raise your hand or to type them into the box um, now, and we will come back uh, to those after uh, John's presentation next. So thank you very much for that, Joanne. Um, I'm now going to go to our next speaker, John Heckles. Um, hopefully the audio issues have now, now been resolved. Um, OK, John, can you hear us? Hi, sorry about this, folks. It looks like we're still having some audio problems with uh, with John's um, presentation there. Um, very sorry about this. Um, since we are now waiting for, for John to come back in, Joanna, if we do come back to you for a couple of questions now, sorry to, uh, to mess about here. Um, yeah, no we problem. do just have um, a couple of quick comments that have come up, actually. Um, Martin Dowell, uh, our first speaker, just had a, a couple of comments. First of all, um, he said that he wanted to reiterate your statement that planning uh, to deliver events is, um, is really fundamental uh, to, to success. Um, and he's also asking, um, do you produce a report of the week's activities, um, as this will give all partners an explanation of why you delivered what you did and what you delivered uh, related to output and outcomes? Um, so do, do you produce a report, Joanne? We do. We have um, an evaluation report that is reported to the Safe Roads Partnership um, once we've collected all the data and everything. So yeah, if anybody wants to see a copy of that, then that is available, yes. 
Okay, fantastic. Um, if anyone else does have any other questions, please do just type them into the box or um, use the raise hand button as well. Um, if you could just bear with me for one moment, um, I think we might be resolving the problem with, uh, with our next speaker's audio, so just bear with me one moment. Um, hello, John, are you there? Hello, Laura, can you hear me? We can now, fantastic. <laughs> Got you on the line. Great. Sorry about the problems there. Um, no, glad fine. that now seems to be resolved. Um, are you okay to... Yes, Sorry? absolutely fine to go ahead. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Um, I shall just um, hand you over control of the screen in that case so we can see your presentation. Um, and if you're okay to continue. I am. Thank you, Laura. No problem. Uh, can you see the screen okay? Uh, yeah, we can do that absolutely fine. Great. Thank you. I'll just start. Um, certainly, it's, it's nice to be here this morning. Um, and we will just like to talk about Operation Dragoon, which will lead into Road Safety Week. Um, so the Operation Dragoon was um, it was started um, primarily as a response to two separate fatal RTCs that we had uh, in the Northumbria Police area. Um, our initial offender record showed that they didn't have any offending history. However, there was, uh, once you delved into the backgrounds, more detailed interrogation showed that they, um, what we call vehicle-borne um, antisocial behaviour. So there was a clear pattern of behaviour before the actual fatals actually occurred. Um, certainly the, the categories of risk we identified um, within drivers um, were that of standard, medium and high, and very much on a similar basis that we deal with our high-risk offenders for other offences. So we thought, well, we can use the same profiling um, for, a, for basically drivers who we believe could be the next fatalities on our roads, uh, and certainly where intervention was needed in those cases. Um, so Operation Dragoon was set up um, firstly for the enforcement intelligence gathering side um, in relation to high-risk um, drivers, but then moved on to the engagement and education. So this would actually move on to business as usual um, in Northumbria Police and in relation to road safety. This meant an overhaul of incident creation by our call takers. Uh, we looked at risk identifications through our systems um, and refreshed our reporting mechanisms because we were getting quite a few calls of um, antisocial behaviour with drivers um, and they weren't linked. Um, we also interrogated social media for further offences um, and we found um, basically young drivers taking uh, unnecessary risks on our roads and actually filming it themselves. Um, and this created a, um, quite a few arrests for these type of offences for high and medium risk offenders. The Crown Prosecution Service, um, they became on board with what we were trying to do because they could see how dangerous this was. So we, we've had a lot of CPS consultation in relation to these risk drivers. Uh, management of incidents and offenders uh, by dedicated investigators. I have a, a team of officers who are primarily tasked with high risk and medium risk offenders uh, on, on the roads. Engagement and education, we, we took a, a lot of um, new educational strands on board whereby we could give key messages um, and we're actually on BBC Crime Watch launching some of Operation Dragoon. Um, we use a lot of our web and social media um, to try and get the message across quite quickly. And the amount of conversations that we have on the web and social media, um, you know, to and against what we're trying to do, uh, but actually engaging people. Um, we've got a lot of age-specific road safety education packages, which we're rolling out. And this is to all ages in schools. Um, and we've got 700 uh, educational premises within the Northumbria Police area, and we're going to go to every single age group and every single school. What most importantly, and what we found is the impact of using victims uh, in relation to the education packages, uh, some of which um, the, the victims have been involved and their families in fatal collisions. And this, it's a very impactive message when you've got families on board in, in conjunction with the police, in conjunction with our partners within Fire and Rescue. 
the education and engagement side has taken us uh, down quite a lot of different routes. Um, hard to reach communities. You may call them um, boy races, but a lot of those people within that group see themselves as car enthusiasts, and there is a bad element within within some of that. And they but they they really want um, to oust that type of person from their groups. Asian youths. Um, it's a hard to reach community, but we've managed through um, local um, Muslim events to engage with those people within those communities. Uh, and we sometimes forget uh, our horse riding equine um, communities. Um, we've just recently linked in with the British Horse Society, uh, and it's about how they feel on the roads and whether they feel safe when cars are passing, but also to try and get their members to be considerate of road users. So there's lots of groups that we are engaging with which we haven't in the past. Um, another group of people are the armed forces. We have barracks within our force boundaries with young drivers uh, who are sometimes stationed abroad, come back into the country and just have to be reintegrated into uh, even driving on the right side of the road again. Um, certainly the, the school education launch um, which we have, uh, which is on the 24th of September, uh, will lead very nicely into the Regional Road Safety Week launch with break uh, in November. Um, and the following day, we have a, a Young Driver short film competition. Uh, which will highlight from schools um, areas whereby um, our young drivers can impact positively by giving a, a film about how they perceive road safety uh, and how they should present that to their peers. The intelligence uh, side of Operation Dragoon meant that we do interrogate social media and we share this with our other departments in crime and when dealing with organized crime groups. Um, the offender management uh, team and geographic areas of responsibility, uh, all this means is that the Northumbria Police is split into different areas and we have um, a specific officer who deals with a particular area for potential high risk vehicle borne offenders. What we think is this will become business as usual for Northumbria Police and road safety. So we need to keep up the momentum. We need to make our, our community safer. Uh, and we'll do that by persistently, persistently refreshing certainly our media messages, but more importantly in partnership with road safety uh, charities and uh, certainly break. And that's sort of the end of my com um, um, presentation today. Um, if there's any questions, please free um, and I'll ask this, and I'll share the presentation certainly with everybody. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for that, John. Um, just to say, um, a few people um, have asked if we can share um, the presentations for today, so I think we will, um, if assuming that's all right with uh, all of our presenters, um, we will email around PDF copies to um, everyone who's registered for the, uh, the uh, webinar today. Um, if that's okay with you? Of course it is, Laura. I'm sorry it's been a bit short and sweet there. Oh yeah, no problem. I, I appreciate you've got uh, sort of operational pressures that obviously uh, might cut, cut your time a bit short. So uh, thank you for, for volunteering your time today. Thank um, you very if much, anyone Laura. does have any questions, um, either for um, for John or for Joanna, because of course we, we did have to um, cut her Q&A session a little bit short there, um, please feel free to ask. Um, we as I said before, um, if you have a question, you can either press the raise hand button and I'll hand over, uh, I'll unmute you so you can um, speak directly to our presenters, um, or feel free to type a question into the question box and I'll reach out to our, um, our presenters. Um, we actually have a question um, from Martin, one of our other presenters, uh, for you, John. Um, yes. John, Martin's asking, um, with regard to the age-specific road safety packages, um, how are you delivering, i.e. what staff are you using, and are you evaluating the product? Yeah, we're, we're using specialists from our motor patrols department, um, and they'll, be, they'll deliver to the, the key areas, and, and that's the, the very young drivers and the drivers uh, of, of the very near future. So it's a, a specialist motor patrols for that age group. 
then we have neighborhood officers who will deliver to um, certainly the age groups below that. And we've actually got a package which um, certainly teachers can actually use themselves as part of the national curriculum. Uh, yes, we will be evaluating um, the actual products themselves over a year basis. Um, so probably in a year's time, I'll be able to give a, a better or a more detailed response uh, in relation to the package. But certainly, um, once the packages um, are out into schools, we'll certainly share those with any partners who wish to have a look at them. Okay, fantastic. Um, it looks like Martin's actually got a couple of comments on this. So Martin, I'm just going to take you off mute, actually. Um, if you'd like to have a just a quick chat with um, with John about these points, um, Martin, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello, Martin. Hi, John. Uh, interesting stuff with the police. I'm just, you know, respectfully going to ask a few questions. Uh, due to financial constraints that not just the police, but fire service, and every organisation finds themselves in, and it's really great to see that you, you know, you're pushing something like this. Is it something I can raise with my colleagues in Cheshire Police to say, look, this is what's happening in Northumbria. Is there any chance of you guys having a look? At, you know, a bit in a little bit more depth of what they're doing and see if it could be uh, transported uh, down across or across into the northwest. Absolutely, Martin. I mean, this has already been shared with uh, our partners in Durham, Cleveland, and some of the Yorkshire forces. Um, it's been seen as best practice, certainly from uh, the Minister for Policing and certainly Roads Policing. Um, so I think certainly this package that we've produced um, could be transported anywhere in the country. Oh, that's excellent. Is this something that uh, ACPO have taken on board as well? They have, yes. Certainly um, Suzanne Davenport, who's the... Brilliant, the yeah, no Yeah, she's, yeah. Um, sh she's seen certainly the early stages of the package, uh, and she sees as, be as best practice. So I would hope that our colleagues uh, in your neck of the woods might be able to uh, probably join in as well. Brilliant. Thanks for that, John. Not a problem. Thank you. Um, it looks like um, Joanne just has a, a quick question for um, for John as well. Um, Joanne, would you like to, to speak to John? Yeah, thank you. Um, John, do you find that you have any issues when you're using operational police staff to deliver interventions? We have tried that in the past here in South Yorkshire, um, but it hasn't always been successful because if police get called off on operational duties and you've got a group of um, school children or business people sat in a room waiting for a presentation that they don't get, um, then sometimes it can be quite difficult. Um, how, how do you tackle that issue? I mean, certainly I've got a dedicated team um, to Operation Dragoon, so I've got motor patrols officers who do the day-to-day uh, roads policing, but I've got a dedicated team who are have an educational strand to it, so they're not going to be called away. Uh, and yeah. I appreciate that, that that is a problem elsewhere in yeah. the country. No, that's good. I mean, you, you're lucky to have that. Um, we, we don't have um, the benefit of that. So, yeah, that's uh, excellent. Thank you for that. Not a problem. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions come in um, from our audience at the moment. Um, so I think I'll say thank you very much for, uh, for that, John, and um, I'll let you uh, obviously get back to your day. So thank you very much for, for sharing your time with us today. Thank you very much, Laura. No problem. Um, so thank you to everyone for um, joining in with our um, our webinar today. Um, I think we've had some really interesting um, ideas and initiatives discussed today, so hopefully that's given you all some really good ideas um, to take away and, and work with during this year's Road Safety Week. Um, as I mentioned at the start, um, a, a recording of this webinar will be made available, and um, as a few people have requested it, we'll also be sending around PDF copies. Um, of the presentations for today, so you'll have those to refer to as well. Um, so thank you very much all for attending. Um, we will also be sending around feedback forms um, after this webinar is finished. Um, we'd really appreciate it if you take, take the time to just fill out a quick feedback form and let us know um, what's been useful to you today. Um, feedback forms are really, really important for us in planning our future events and making sure that we're, we're putting on webinars and seminars, etc., that are the most useful to you. So please do take the time to do that. And so thank you very much, and thank you indeed to all of our presenters for today. Um, and we're looking forward to, to hearing from you all um, about your fabulous Road Safety Week activities. Thank you very much. <laughs>